Hey love, you doing all right? Now I know it's a lot to take in, it really is a lot to take in, I mean. This is the capital city of Brosrona. It's the very capital of uh, the entirety of the Dwarven Kingdom. The whole of Nimduvar's wealth is represented here. It's a lot to take in with all the dwarves running about and people from other races and cultures and clans uh, all sort of intermingling. I understand if you're feeling a bit uh, overwhelmed. No, it's okay. No, look, you don't have to speak, I understand. Uh, it's quite closed in down here. You see these sort of sweeping palisades and these large squared buildings. They've been here since the beginning, but there's a new creation that I think you'll like. Yeah, come with me. Yeah, just step onto this walkway and see how it's moving. It's going to carry us like a carriage. So watch. And now we're at... Up, up, up. And there we go. Much clearer up here with out all the buildings and the people sort of crowding in around us. This will hopefully, hopefully, allow you to uh, breathe a little bit better. Yeah, the dwarves bit built this sort of uh, interconnecting walkway up here, of moving walkways as a way to help visitors get around. See, they figured out relatively recently that uh, most people who come to visit Brosrona have a difficult time getting around. But they they themselves prefer to be down there amongst their buildings. They, they sort of built all of their buildings to be leaning inward to simulate being in a cave. For whatever reason, it helps them navigate. But for people like us, this is important. You smell that clean air. I've been thinking, actually, about uh, another story that I can tell you about sort of dwarven culture while we're here. That might help help you to feel at home. And I know that this is um, not a one-to-one -one correlation, but it is a story about outsiders. You see, a very, very long time ago, in Nimdivar, there was a third kind of dwarf. You see, dwarves are generally split into two clans, hill dwarves and mountain dwarves, so red beards and black beards, generally speaking. You know, obviously, they're not separated like that, so you get intermingling and different colours beards come from that, but... Those are the two sort of base code dwarves. But it wasn't always like that. A very, very long time ago, there was a third kind of dwarf called the Dwarven Giants. They stood between five and a half to six feet tall. But they were proportionate to a dwarf, so they were almost the same width. Six feet shoulder width. Unbelievably large, impossibly strong, sturdy as the day is long. They were mighty warriors, but they were seen as outsiders. And one of the big problems with them is that they could not have children. So, what did they do? Their very best to leave their mark on the world. As a matter of fact, the seven legendary blades forged at the beginning of Eldurin, one of them, called the Anvil, was wielded by a dwarf giant, a hero to his people.
and these dwarven giants turn themselves into protectors and builders, makers of incredible things and protectors of those weaker than themselves. And so as their line dwindled and began to die out, their names would not be forgotten and they would not be shunted to the side. I tell you that story because, and this is difficult for me to say and I should have brought it up before, I cannot um, have children. My line dies with me. And I know that you, as you are, might not care about that, and you might care about that, but it was a source of a great deal of shame for me for a very long time. But I heard that story, and it made me feel whole. You know? It made me stop placing my value on life that I could bring into the world and rather place my value on protecting the life that's already in the world, taking care of it. It was uh, actually shortly after that revelation that I met you on that raid. saw you and I wanted, I, I knew at that moment that I wanted to protect you to my dying breath, to free you from your situation and bring you to a better one and I know now that that was the right choice and if I had been quote unquote normal I might not have had that mindset and let you left you there to rot. Being typical, being standard, is grossly overrated. You and me, we're outside the normal. We're not within, you know, the strict binary of life. I cannot procreate, you yeah. know? You don't follow gender norms. It's not the same thing, of course. But it does make us somewhat other. And it's nice to know that we're standing with good company here on the outside. We're standing with the dwarven giants. And I think that's pretty cool. Ah, here we go. Heading down into the subway soon. Now listen, if you start hyperventilating, freaking out, panicking, anything like that, just tap me on the shoulder and we'll find somewhere quiet for you to be able to calm down. All right. Onwards and upwards. <laughs>